Australia's energy sector is facing an existential crisis. It's the world's third largest fossil fuel exporter behind only Russia and Saudi Arabia. The global race to net zero could see this industry collapse and Australia's economy along with it. But hydrogen could come to its rescue. As a source of fuel, it has the potential to transform industries that have been difficult to decarbonise. As a source of hope, it's creating claims that Australia could become a renewables exporting superpower. Governments around the world are pouring money into its development. But does it all stack up? What would its success require? And will Australia be beaten to the punch? Hydrogen can be used as an energy source when its atoms are separated from another substance, like water. It's then stored as a gas and used to power a range of processes, like fuel cells for trucks and steel production. But separating the hydrogen requires electricity. That's why there are several types of hydrogen production, like brown hydrogen, which uses brown coal to power the separation process, or grey hydrogen, which extracts hydrogen out of natural gas. There is some hype behind blue hydrogen, which is the same as grey hydrogen, except that it uses carbon capture to reduce its emissions. The important thing to know here is that none of these are emissions free. Only green hydrogen has that advantage, and that's where there is real market interest. That's because the electricity to generate it comes from renewable sources, such as wind and solar. That's what makes it green. Hydrogen can be used in heavy industrial processes that can't easily be electrified, like steel and cement production, mineral refinery, and heavy transport. That's why there's hype. It's viewed by many as crucial to decarbonising these industries. But Australia's heavy industry isn't a significant part of the economy, which means the economic benefits of producing green hydrogen will largely be found in exporting it to other countries. Australia is a nation that heavily relies on its role as a resource exporter, both in order to support the domestic economy and to strengthen international relations. As the world looks to phase out the use of fossil fuels, which currently contributes 24% of Australia's total export value, the country is seeking to fill that gap. And there's a big market opportunity in Europe and Asia, where demand has sharpened since the war in Ukraine began. Germany, who was previously a major importer of Russian gas, recently committed 50 million euros in a partnership with Australia to develop the commercial viability of hydrogen. ...has set the ambition for Australia to be a renewable energy superpower. But we also want to be a renewable energy export superpower, working with countries like Germany on the industries of the future. But what hydrogen can enable is very exciting. So if we think about the prospects for green steel, for example, where you can have um, zero emissions um, metals and metals processing um, using hydrogen-based energy, that then creates a, a situation where Australia suddenly has the product. Because we can do this at lower cost than we are currently doing, we know Renewables Australia has a competitive advantage and a comparative advantage already. We're the sunniest, windiest country, and, a, and our cost of hydrogen production for green is roughly half that it's been estimated that it is, say, in the US. This deal with Germany is emblematic of Australia's belief in hydrogen as the way forward. There are many who want to transition Australia from its current pariah status as a fossil fuel exporter to this new economic holy grail of being a renewables exporting superpower. The alternative is one where Australia doesn't take advantage of the rise in renewables and its coal and gas resources become stranded assets that no one wants. But if it's going to create this hydrogen industry, it's going to need to be globally competitive. Australia's flagship investment strategy is the Hydrogen Head Start program, providing $2 billion in funding for large-scale renewable hydrogen projects. It aims to deliver at least two large-scale projects and help Australia reach one gigawatt of green hydrogen capacity by 2030. To put that into context, there's currently only 2.8 gigawatts of capacity globally, but the International Energy Agency says 560 gigawatts is needed to reach net zero. There are many other privately funded projects in the pipeline. As of last year, Australia had the largest number of announced renewable hydrogen plants, adding up to between $230 and $300 billion of investment. But few have been greenlit. 
At the same time, Australia's renewable energy agency, ARENA, has devoted about $40 million to fund research towards ultra-low-cost solar. That could help Australia reach its goal of $2 per kilogram of green hydrogen. China is currently the world's largest producer and consumer of hydrogen, but the vast majority of that is brown hydrogen. Early in 2023, China's state-owned energy company Sinopec broke ground on an 828 million US dollar hydrogen facility in Inner Mongolia, where wind and solar energy are abundant. Sinopec has been reported describing this as a demonstration project and plans to roll out 70 projects of a similar size over the next three years. Overall, Sinopec has planned 4.6 billion US dollars of wind, solar and hydrogen power in the next five years. In the US, the Biden administration passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which will help fund the Hydrogen Shot, a program to accelerate breakthroughs in hydrogen technology and cut the cost of green hydrogen by 80%. The overall funding for hydrogen initiatives in the US exceeds 10 billion US dollars and includes subsidies for hydrogen production. This doesn't even take into account the investments being made by European nations to create and support hydrogen industries in the global south, potentially leading to even more competition. So Australia risks being out-invested by China and the US, but the question is whether it's even green hydrogen that we want to be exporting. You know, we need to be focusing on where is the greatest growth potential, and it doesn't have to be for you know, replacing like for like. It doesn't have to be we're replacing coal with some other form of energy. We can do other things. But the market for these you know, green products, net zero products, is only going to increase exponentially. And using hydrogen to enable other sectors, whether it's metals manufacturing, whether it's um, you know, ammonia, um, particularly the farming sector, um, you know, so those sorts of things, that's where our prospects are and that's where we build up. But Australia has, you know, I just point out, Australia has reformed its economy many times over. You know, we used to ride on the sheep's back. We used to have a much bigger manufacturing sector. We have changed a lot of things. Clearly there's intent in Australia to create a healthy green hydrogen industry with up to $300 billion of investments in the pipeline but there's still the obstacles of producing, storing, and transporting hydrogen. If we don't overcome them, a lot of these investments might be in vain. We still need to solve the problem of generating enough energy to produce it in the first place. The Australian Energy Market Operator, or AEMO, has modelled future scenarios for Australia's electricity grid. What would need to happen based on our pace of adopting an emissions-free energy system? It's identified what it calls a step change scenario as the most likely, reaching 83% renewables by 2030, approaching net zero by 2035. Achieving this requires a doubling of current capacity and an investment of $12.7 billion. While Australia is on its way to achieving this, it's unprecedented in the scale of investment. But if Australia wanted to become a green hydrogen powerhouse, it would need far more renewables to power that industry. To cope, capacity would need to increase eightfold. The AEMO calls the scale of this change monumental. Let's say, the, you know, the International Energy Agency in their modelling assumes that 50% of the world's energy will be hydrogen in 2050. I just need to, somebody needs to say that cannot happen and won't happen before we spend too much money. So it might be a few percent, but not 50. So you start to see that it's looking like a two to 5% component of the future, um, not a 50% component. And that has an enormous impact on how you would allocate precious resources in addressing our climate crisis. It's becoming clear that hydrogen isn't the panacea that some are selling. It could help decarbonize parts of heavy industry and maybe become an important export but it would require investment and foresight that we're yet to see. In the end, those predicting a hydrogen superpower might be putting the cart before the horse.